And I keep hearing that people talk about we need more conversations about race. Actually, we don't need more conversations. What we need is conversions, because the reconciliation that changes people is not a racial reconciliation. It's a spiritual reconciliation when people are reconciled to God. We saw it in those church members. When I love God and I know that God created other people, regardless of their color, as much as he made me, mm -hmm. I don't well, have a problem with racism. It's, and, it's solved. And out of this awful tragedy, you are certainly right. There has been a very uplifting symbols coming out of that church and people rallying around them. Governor Mike Huckabee, thanks for joining us this morning. Fox News host holding him accountable for a silly comment, as usual. You know, Jesus, God, racism, solved. Any questions? Oh, so right, Mike. Thanks for joining us. So th that's it, guys. We missed it. Religion is the answer. Let's take a look at some Bible verses on this. Leviticus 25 says, quote, However, you may purchase male or female slaves from among the foreigners who live among you. Stay classy. You may also purchase the children of such resident, uh, resident foreigners, including those who have been born in your land. You may treat them as your property, passing them on to your children as permanent inheritance. Hashtag morality, son! Uh, you may treat your slaves like this, but the people of Israel, your relatives, must never be treated this way. Hmm, okay. Uh, Exodus 21 says the following, When a man sells his daughter as a slave, <laughs> again, because he's a moral person, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again. So not only are you selling your daughter, you're selling her into sex slavery, and then if she's not uh, blowing him the right way, well, then the guy's allowed to give, give the daughter back to you. Full refund. Biblical morality. As Bill Maher said, I can get more morality out of the Rick James Bible than the King James Bible. I do believe that's true. How about some more Exodus? Quote, when a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he shall be punished. Oh, thank goodness. If, however, oh boy, the slave survives for a day or two, he is not to be punished, since the slave is his own property. Oh, okay. So if you beat the living fuck out of your slave and they're tortured for two days in pain and then they die, it's all good. But if you beat him and on the first day he dies, well, then you're in trouble. We might give you a fine or something. Uh, but here's where the uh, Christian Brigade pops up and they say, But, Kyle, that's the Old Testament. It's not in the New Testament. Do you see where this story is going? Ephesians 6.5, quote, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. That would be the New Testament. I'm not done yet. Timothy 1, quote, Christians who are slaves should give their masters full respect so that the name of God and his teaching will not be shamed. If your master is a Christian, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. You should work all the harder because you are helping another believer by your efforts. Slavery is even in the Gospel of Luke. And Exodus has one part where they go into detail about how exactly to treat your different slaves. So it depends on where they're from, it depends on what their gender is, it depends on how you bought the slave, and they go into detail. They give you like a checklist. Okay, uh, if your slave is from Samaria, do X, Y, and Z. If your slave is from there, make sure that you can only purchase them in this situation, and yada yada, they go into great detail. Now, I get it, man, I get it. There's also the Martin Luther King Juniors that came along you know, who argued that we're supposed to be against it according to the Bible. They had their verses too. You know, Martin Luther King and uh, other people who were trying to stop oppression and fight back against a, a screwed up society, they also pointed to the Bible and said, okay, we're going to use this to rationalize it. But like I say every time we discuss these things, why even bother having a dueling cherry-picking contest? Why would, you, why would you even bother? It's obvious that the solution is not the thing that was at least partly the problem. Instead of doing a dueling cherry-picking contest, why not get rid of all the metaphysical, dogmatic bullshit 
and have a logical conversation, have a rational conversation. Because once you have a rational conversation, once you have a dialogue about this, the only conclusion you could come to is, yeah, I don't think it really makes much sense for one human being to own another human being. That doesn't seem to make sense. So, uh, the biggest takeaway from this is, Mike Huckabee, factually speaking, empirically speaking, the answer was not Christianity, which was part of the problem and was used to bolster slavery all along. We know that is not the answer, because it's not like Christianity was just introduced to the South yesterday. It's been there for a very long time, okay? The answer is the exact thing that you're trying to, to push aside. The answer is the racial dialogue, where you're actually right on one thing. It shouldn't be a dialogue as much as it should be white people, specifically conservative white people, sitting down, shutting the fuck up, and listening to what black people have to say. Because racial history in America is not even. It's not 50-50. It's not like, hey, you guys did some fucked up things, we did some fucked up things. No, no, that, no, 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 no. That's not true at all. No, no, no. No, it was white people who uh, had slaves. It was uh, white people who did Jim Crow. White people who did segregation. Uh, white people who set up a system that granted themselves affirmative action all along. So in this racial dialogue, there's a lot more listening and learning that white people need to do when it comes to black people. And then from there, we can start to heal and move forward and come up with solutions.